Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. Well, didn't we just do this problem before? Yes, because I messed up and I'm going to fix it in this video. So we're given cosine x plus sine y equals 2. And we're supposed to evaluate sine x plus cosine y. Thank you for the comments. Uh, this is a redo and I learned a lot from your comments. And I know a lot of people mentioned that there was a mistake. I don't know. I don't even know why. I was so confused about this, but anyways. So here's our problem. We are given this equation and we're supposed to evaluate this expression. So one of the things that we can do is basically, which I'm gonna call first method, is squaring both sides. Let's go ahead and call the second expression A and then square both sides on both of these then we get a system of equations, cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x times sine y plus sine squared y equals 4. And from the second equation, if you square both sides like a plus b, we get sine squared x plus 2 sine x cosine y, the 2ab in the middle, plus cosine squared y equals a squared. So our goal is basically to solve for a. That's our goal, okay? Now, the reason why we square both sides when we're given something like this is simple. We want to use the Pythagorean identity, which is the sine squared plus cosine squared. You see, when I add these two things, I get 1 because sine squared plus cosine squared is always 1, even when x is complex and non-real. This also gives me 1. That's nice. And then in the middle, I get 2 times something. Let's go ahead and write it down first. And I like to write the uh, sine first. As you know, sine y cosine x plus sine x cosine y. I'm going to have to move this a little bit. Sine x cosine y. 2 times that plus 1 is equal to a squared plus 4. Now notice that the expression inside the parentheses is actually sine of x plus y. This is the sum formula. Now we have 1 plus 1 which is 2. We can subtract it from 4 and we get a 2. So this times 2 equals a squared plus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2, right? Now you can definitely go ahead and divide both sides by 2 and so on and so forth, but my goal is not to solve for sine of something, right? I want to solve for a and here's what I'd like to do. Let's isolate a squared. That gives us 2 sine of x plus y minus 2. Now one thing we know, because a is real, a is a real number, a squared is always going to be greater or equal to 0. If you remember, in a recent video, I gave you the definition of real numbers. Real numbers are numbers whose square is non-negative. Okay? That's the most compact definition that I've ever seen. Anyway, so a squared must be greater or equal to 0 if a is real, which indicates or implies that this expression right here, 2 times sine of x plus y, is greater or equal to 2 by adding 2 to both sides. And if you divide both sides by 2, you get sine of x plus y is greater than or equal to 1. But we do know that, again, if x plus y is real, which is real in this case, then sine of that can never exceed 1. But this inequality tells us it's supposed to be greater than or equal to 1, which means we have to use the highest maximum value, and this implies, hey, sine of x plus y equals 1. It can't be anything else. It can't be less than 1, because this inequality says it needs to be not less than 1. Make sense? Okay, so now we got something important, because sine of x plus y equals 1 implies something else. Take a look. If you plug it in, you get a squared equals 2 minus 2, which is 0, and from here, a becomes 0. Awesome. So we got the value of a, and that's what we were looking for. And this brings us to the end of the first method. Again, the question was cosine x plus sine y equals 2, and we were supposed to evaluate sine x plus cosine y. We called it something, and we found 0. So if you go ahead and check out that system, you'll see that it is consistent. By the way, you can also think about if this is not equal to 2 but something else, can you find the value of the second expression or is there going to be more than one 
solution. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method and then we'll compare and you'll get to decide which method you like better. Again, thank you for the comments. They are very enlightening. So we are given again this equation. So pretend you don't know what is going on. Cosine x plus sine y is equal to one, I mean two. And we're supposed to evaluate sine x plus cosine y, okay, numerically. So the second method is basically using the, the fact that sine and cosine are bounded, meaning that if x and y are real or in general alpha, let's say the alpha is the angle, then sine of alpha is always going to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, and the same thing is true for cosine alpha. If we apply it to our situation, and I don't really care about the lower bound because I'm interested in a larger value like a 2, right? And you'll see that 2 comes from 1 plus 1. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this expression cosine x plus sine y equals 2, and then I'm going to look at each of these um, functions. So we know that cosine x needs to be less than or equal to 1, right? That's the upper bound. And sine of y also needs to be less than or equal to 1. Now, if we had this, here's the problem. If you had the same angle, could we safely say that, hey, cosine x is less than or equal to 1, sine x is less than or equal to 1, then does that mean cosine x plus sine x is less than or equal to 2? Yes, this is kind of true, but this is, this is not a strict inequality. The problem is cosine x plus sine x cannot be 2 because these two are not independent. Does that make sense? The actual, the maximum value for this sum is actually square root of 2, which you can find by using a lot of different methods. Anyways, that's a different story, but we can add these because x and y are independent. So from here, cosine x plus sine y becomes less than or equal to 2. But the problem claims that it's equal to 2, and obviously it can't be greater than 2, so the maximum value it can take is 2, and it is taking the maximum value, but that's only possible if cosine x takes the maximum and sine y takes the maximum. And those values are both 1. So this implies that cosine x is equal to 1 and sine y is equal to 1. You know what that implies from Pythagorean theorem? If cosine x is 1, then sine x is 0. And if sine y is 1, then cosine of y is 0. Right? Because, come on, it's, it's common sense, right? And then since we're looking for sine x plus cosine y, that will be 0 as well as before, right? And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.